Hello, I'm Yubri from Smallfish. Welcome to Fish School 2.0, episode 4. In this episode, we'll make this knot, pants this knot, and krill this knot. Like mentioned in episode 0, we'll need a unified way to handle health, damage, and death. A component that is given to everything that needs all of those. Let's start that inside of our player prefab. Add a new component. Let's call it uh, unit info. Sounds like a good name to me. Oh, we still have the default component. I'll just delete it. We'll need a way to differentiate allies from enemies. So we'll create a new enum. Call it unit type. And for now we'll have uh, unit type none, player and not. Add it as a property to our component. I'll call it team. Our player will be of the team player. Let's spice it up a bit. Make this look cool just as an eye candy. As you can see there's lots of icons being used. You can see them in components, in the editor, in the windows, everywhere. But how do we know where to find and use these icons? Well, they actually come from a font made by Google called Material Icons. If you visit the official website, link in the description, make sure to bookmark it, you are able to find all icons available in Sandbox. I'll start with a little guide to represent the player unit type. Search for person. Hmm. I'll go with this cool guy with a fighting stick. Wait. This guy has two fighting sticks, that's better. What you want is this second one, Nordic underscore walking. Copy to your clipboard, and inside of the enum, right before the player, add the icon attribute. Paste down what we copied from the site. Let's do the same for this knot. I don't think there's any icon that represents that, so we'll have to look for something similar. A cloud kinda looks like not. I'll go with this one. Fill it in. Let's do one for this as well. I'll use a blank square or something. Let's also add some summaries. I'll add an icon to our component as well. I've got a good one already. Let's save and check it out. I'm not good with descriptions, but these look pretty nice. Let's add a property for our unit's max health, which is what everyone will start with. Now the actual health variable. We're gonna go with a public getter and a private setter. This way, only the class itself can modify the health. The reason being that if we want to do damage or heal, we want it to be done through a method that handles the math and calls events for other components to access. When the unit is first created, we set their current health to the max health. I'll also add something to determine if something is alive or not. So for example, if a not is playing the death animation, we don't want our turrets to target it anymore, but we don't want to delete it immediately. Now let's get some methods to handle damage. If our unit isn't alive, then ignore. Set our health to health minus the damage clamped between 0 and the max health. If our health is less or equal than 0, unalive the unit. Create a krill method, which we can also just call to instantly krill something. For now, we'll destroy the root game object as well. Replace this here. And with all this logic implemented, we can also add health regeneration. Would be a shame if you got damaged early on and spent the rest of your game on low HP. I'm gonna have it so if you don't get damaged for a certain amount of time, you'll start regenerating HP every second. An HP regeneration amount. And how much time needs to pass before you start regenerating. To implement it, we're going to make use of a very useful type called time since and time until. No need for this logic to be asynchronous. 
two private variables, one for the last time we received damage, of type time since, and one for the next time we heal, of type time until. Inside of our damage method, if the damage is positive, so not counting healing, we reset the last damage time since to zero. This is automatically going to count the seconds, so we can access the current timer anywhere and anytime. Let's move to our onUpdate method. If the last time we received the damage was longer than the health regeneration timer we set, so 3 seconds in our case, and our health isn't already maxed, and we are still alive, check if the next heal timer has reached zero. Then it will deal negative damage for our regeneration amount, so it's going to heal instead, and set the next heal timer back to 1 second. As you can see, time until can also be used as a boolean. All it does is return true if the timer reached zero. Let's add a log info to try it in game and see if it works. And change the initial health to 1 instead of max health. Save. Make sure the player prefab is up to date. Select your console and hit play. It's gonna wait the 3 initial seconds while we haven't received any damage. Then, every second, it's going to heal 0.5 health until we reach the max health. Fantastic! Right, let's undo the debug stuff. And now, to make this knot, in our prefabs folder, let's create a new prefab and call it Znot. Not sure why there's a game object here, let's remove it. Let's start this knot off with the unit info. Teams not, max health 3, regen 0.3, timer 5 seconds, tweak them how you want. Let's add a skinned model renderer. And for the model, we'll select a cloud model, straight from asset party. In the cloud section, select everything, let's sort by models, weird that it doesn't do that automatically. We got tons of options here, but we're looking for a specific model. If we search for Znot, you'll find one that our artist Grodbert made and uploaded just for us. Right click and view online. Looks like it's rigged and animated as well. If we scroll down, we are also provided with animation parameters. While you're at it, leave a positive review. Anyways, back to the editor. Double click the model. It's going to download it, which it gave you an indicator, but I'm sure they'll add it in the future. And there it is, in its shrunken glory. From what I've seen, this model is supposed to grow, so let's place the prefab inside of the scene and see what it does. Let's give it collisions. I'll go with a sphere collider. Size it up to the model size. Half of the sphere should be below ground, so it should fit well. Try it in game. Now that I look at it, it should be smaller. Let's try 50. Fantastic! It looks so ugly. It makes me want to punch it. Go to our player and let's add a few relevant properties in the stats category. A property for the damage dealt by our punch. A property for our fast you can punch. And a property for how far you can punch. Let's visualize that inside of our gizmos. Let's first define the gizmo draw so we can reuse the same one. Let's add a cylinder coming off of the eyes with the length of our punch range. Draw a line cylinder beginning at the eye position and ending at the eye position plus a directional vector pointing forward relative to our rotation with the length of our punch range. Make it 5 units thick at the beginning and 5 units thick at the end and let's display it with 10 lines. Actually, let's only display this stuff if you select the player. If we are not selected in the editor, then don't run the code here. Save, and let's check it on the editor. Now that I look at it, the range is pretty short. I'll increase it to 90. Now for the actual logic. A time since variable to see when was the last time we punched. 
a new method called punch, set the animation helper's hold type to the punch type, there's different hold types for weapons and such, and not sure why there's no helper method in the animation helper for this, but to trigger our attack animation, we'll go directly to our skinned model renderer and set the animation parameter called B underscore attack to true. The B stands for bull, and it's a parameter that fires off the animation and then sets itself back to false instantly. Unless you have access to the animgraph, this will be guesswork, but luckily for our snot model, the modeler left us a list of parameters and how to use them. Reset our last punch timer to zero. Move back to the on fixed update method. If we press the punch input and the last punch was over the punch cooldown, punch. Check it in game. Fantastic. We are still holding our punching pause though, after we're done punching, let's reset it after a few seconds of not punching. Inside of the code block, where we already make sure the animator isn't null, if we haven't punched for at least 2 seconds, then set the hold type back to none. Go back in game. Let's krill this slime now. Go back to the punch code, we're going to do some ray casting like in the previous episode, this time casting the ray from our eye, going forward and checking if we hit an enemy. Create a new trace in our scene, starting from our eye world position, ending in our eye world position, plus our eye angles forward direction with the length of our punch range. Make the ray 10 units wide. Ignore any game object with the player tag. Ignore our game object and all of its children. And finally, run our trace. If our trace has hit something, In the game object our trace hit, we go through its components and try to get a unit info component. If it finds it, then it returns true and provides us with this unit info variable. If it did find it, then damage the unit info with our punch strength. Let's save and krill some snot. It took us 3 hits because it only had 3 HP. We did it! We krilled this knot! Fantastic! That's it for the episode! Thanks for enjoying our fish tent!